market challenges, and we talked a little bit about it uh, when you talked about this concept of growing using biostimulants and biopesticides, as opposed to what has been the standard for decades, right? Um, a lot of these farms, specifically the larger farms, you know, they have had, whether it be contracts or processes and standards in place for a very long time. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a difficult thing for uh, those types of, of, of agricultural uh, producers to transition. Um, so, uh, so, you know, adapting to it and changing with it is a slower process and probably we would like uh, as, as people who are environmentally conscious um, compatibility with other synthetic inputs. Um, you know, while biostimulants are a great solution and a great option for farmers to reduce everything from fertilizer usage, uh, you know, practicing um, more sustainable methods of uh, agriculture cultivation, um, you know, there still are synthetics that people are going to use. And sometimes the compatibility are challenging to each other. So as an example, if you're using a microorganism that is, you know, targeted specifically to whether it be condition the soil or, or you know, stimulate the plant's autoimmune response, um, a lot of these synthetic applications may kill everything. Right. So it's tough. You, you really got to do your research on which synthetic inputs are compatible with bio stimulants um, and aren't going to basically kill all your all your good uh, microorganisms. So that's, you know, very important to understand compatibility, uh, evaluating performance and gathering data uh, for product registration. So, you know, chemistries and, and, and products have to be registered in states and, and countries. Um, so. You know, we have to be able to gather a lot of data to be able to register those products. And, you know, that can be a challenge when you're doing very small observations and you don't have a large database to 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 culminate and provide for product regi registration. So that can be a challenge. And then I guess the last challenge that comes to mind would be um, the application of it right out the gate or, or not out the gate, rather, rather transitioning. So and we talked about that with big farms, but you know, initially conditioning your soil, let's say you've had a farm that has had, you know, heavy uh, synthetic use of pesticides and fertilizer and the entire um, bio microorganism uh, in the rhizosphere or, or rather in the soil has been decimated, right? So now you have to condition the soil, you have to reintroduce those uh, uh, bio the biostimulants the microorganisms and that can take some time it, it certainly doesn't happen overnight um it can take up to easily two years to to really re regenerate for regenerate the soil so that it has the ability to perform and produce the crops um so so that can be cost uh, uh prohibitive right out the gate in the beginning when you're transitioning from let's just say traditional uh what has been traditional agriculture to to biostimulants and the, that first cost can be you know sometimes uh, prohibitive for some farmers to even want to take on that challenge. But the long term, it's more cost effective because now after you've made that shift and you've made you, you've transitioned, ultimately over the long long term, you're going to use less uh, water, less irrigation intervals in your farm. You're going to use less uh, fertilizer. You're going to use uh, less pesticides. So in the long term, it's more cost effective. But in the short term and that first, uh, you know, that first transition can be, you know, a little bit challenging for some farmers to do. Um, and I think that's, you know, one of the many reasons why we haven't seen it, you know, full swing in the United States. Um, one, you know, people are reluctant to change something that they already know that's very easy for them. Um, and there aren't any restrictions. People only start making changes when, you know, res regulations and restrictions require them to. Um, or their environment requires them to because they've already depleted their soil and now they're dropping, you know, so much nitrogen per field that that becomes uh, starts to become cost prohibitive as the cost of uh, those inputs continue to go up.